Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Craven the Deets. I am Mr. Craven, duh, and I'm joined today by David Samansky. He is the dev for Finger Bones, A Moon Sliver, Music Machine, A Wolf in Autumn, and Dusk. So, yeah, today I'm going to be checking out Finger Bones first. It's his first game that really got him out into the spotlight, and I have ever, I've never actually ever played it. So I thought I would check it out first, and then we're going to give him a little talky talk. Let's go! Okay, let's get to the game. Uh, Fingerbones is a short psychological horror game that focuses on storytelling and mystery, where you explore a mysterious abandoned building and find notes that paint a disturbing picture. Please read the description before playing. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and do it. Let me lower the sensitivity a little bit. There we go. Nope. Yeah, there we go. Alright. So this is Fingerbones. Um, I actually haven't played this game. I played all of his other games. It's my weekend to get Katie, but I'm not re I'm really not in the mood. I distracted her with the TV and came here to read. I couldn't interest myself in reading, so I tried to write. I couldn't write anything more than the usual handful of disconnected thoughts and theories. Medication didn't help, and divorce certainly didn't help, because I'm not depressed. I'm enlightened. This is the real result of two decades of scientific education and phys uh, philosophical pondering. This is the price of knowledge. Okay. Also, my face is super red. <laughs> I'm really sunburned. Uh, yeah, I played the Music Machine and Moon Sliver uh, and all those other games, but I never played this one. It appears to be a page from manuscript. Pop morality is too reliant on emotions and not reliant enough on rational thought. If morality must be determined, and I maintain that it is a farce, it should not be determined by feeling. Feelings are nebulous, objective, and changeable. Rather, it should be determined by thinking. The actions of a natural creature uh, are the actions of a natural creature are natural and thus moral, unless a uh, concrete scientific reason can be given to prove them as immoral. So you're saying that because we're oh hey flashlight. So because we're human, anything we do. Anything that we naturally want to do is natural, and thus moral. Is that what he's saying? Let's see, what are you? Okay, something goes there later. Uh, so said to leave, I go back to the door where I started, but I don't want to leave, I don't think. Let's see, can I turn you on? Okay. Oh! There's something new over here. At least I think it's new. Okay, so it needs a password. Moral? Nope, okay. Wait, what was his daughter's name? Katie, right? K-A-T-I-E. Let's try that. Uh, 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 uh. I don't think that was right. Let's keep looking around. When I was 15 years old, I lost my virginity. Whoa! <laughs> I shook uncontrollably the entire time. I felt uh, the same primal excitement yesterday night in the cellar. Oh no. See, that's, that, that's the exit. Let's try this door. Oh crap, is this the cellar? It finally happened. The whole world is a chaos of thunder and screams. And when the ashes settle, we will all be wild animals again. I'm ecstatic beyond words. I haven't been able to reach Lynn for several days, and she's probably dead for all I care. For all I know or care. Uh, but Katie was here when it started, and I have no idea what to do with her. Most of the town is dead. Katie and I only survived because we ran to the bunker. Perhaps this is what I've needed. Freedom from all the irrational rules and inane, inane social values. Just pure, beautiful survival. So what finally happened? Okay, so that's locked. Uh, I boxed up everything that isn't practical and useful. I burned all the books that weren't for scientific uh, edification. 
I'd like to store all the boxes in the cellar, but I can't get them down the ladder by myself. Just piled them up near the hatch. Okay, so this isn't the cellar yet. The blood would probably ruin them anyway. So there's blood down in the cellar? Okay. Let's see. Let's see if there's any more notes laying around. So what happened to the town? Why is everybody dead? Yeah, that's the immoral thing. I don't know if any of these open. Uh. Okay, I guess let's cut to whenever I find something. Oh! Hey, hi! I don't know why I'd use my daughter's name as a door lock code in my survival bunker. Whatever keeps her happy, I suppose. She's like her mother. A delicate, fragile version of her mother. Damn her. So... I guess I did. Since I put in... I typed in Katie before I even saw that note. And then... What was... Lynn? No? Okay. So I guess that's what unlocked that door to go down there to begin with. Oh! Now it's open. Hello? <laughs> uh, hi. I changed the storage room code to something I can easily remember. NNY. The rest of the word is missing. NNY. Okay. Let's try to remember that. NNY. Excuse me. Okay. Some various tools. Ah, there is a bit of blood on the table. She remembered Father's Day and drew me a picture. I don't understand her. <laughs> She's just like her mother. She wants to waste time drawing pictures. And we're barely able to find enough food to survive. I turned her crayons into candles. Oh. We need more candles in case uh, the generator goes out again. Uh, and it helps break up the monotony. I yearn for the excitement of those first weeks. There are things I've wanted to do for years. Desires I've kept locked in the back of my consciousness. It's been nearly a year since I've seen a woman, and now I realize there's no practical reason to keep these desires locked up anymore. Oop, okay. Uh... NNY. The re so NNY what? Something you can easily remember. I think back there is that. Let's see. The rest of the word is missing. NNY. NNY. Oh, maybe it's a... Oh, hold on. NNY. I wonder if it's his wife's name backwards. Or ex-wife's name. That's something I can think of. So let's try Lynn backwards. Okay. Let's go back downstairs. Let's see if that unlocked that door... Uh, that was locked in the dark room. Or maybe it could be the hatch. Or I could just be totally wrong. I could just be a big dumb idiot. Okay, so that's locked. There we go. Yeah, so it was his, his ex-wife's name backwards. <clears throat> I'm a bag of DNA, and I exist to make more of myself. I married and produced a daughter because my genes demanded reproduction. I wrote books and created because creativity served a survival advantage to my ancient ape ancestors. 
I built this place, took refuge in it, spent hours thinking up silly little artificial laws to live by, because my forefathers built cities and societies to allow time and peace to reproduce and to protect their genes. Dreams, love, dreams, loves, opinions, desires, beauty, innocence, figments of our collective primordial imagination, fleeting electrical signals that fire across our synapses for a pointless moment in time. They used to serve a purpose, and now they are needless confusion. And here I am, the last man on earth, for all I know, ready to be freed of them. Boop. Okay. So, he's all like, party time, now that everybody's dead. Huh. Okay, so I wonder what that opened. Let's go stairs and see if that changed anything. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, everything looks the same. I thought that something might have popped up in here. Oh, they did. Oh no, these are the actual finger bones. The seller is freedom. Oh, fuck. Did he eat his kid? No. Oh no. <laughs> I was wondering, I was, I always wondered why I was called finger bones. Okay, so now that I've read that note, it says the seller is freedom. Does that mean it's unlocked? No. Okay. So what did I miss? Cause like I hit this switch, thing up there opened. All right, let's take a look around again. Seller is freedom. That's something I can think of. I also, like, counted the finger bones. I don't think that was it, though. So the password to the seller was freedom. Got it. Oh, wow. There's only, uh... Yep. There's only enough food for one. So she's going to die anyways. I'm free now. Freedom. It took the end of all humanity for me to find freedom. Oh, buddy. Seems to be uh, torn from a diary. She finally died last night. I don't know whether from starvation, dehydration, or blood loss. I threw her body in the woods. Her fingers. My anti-religious artifacts. My testaments to moral and intellectual freedom are locked in the safe upstairs. I'm content in the knowledge that I haven't done anything wrong. The father didn't know why he'd come back after all these years, starving and tired. He just wanted to see the cellar one last time. With one last flicker, the flashlight died and he was left in the pitch dark. He sat down on the cold floor and closed his eyes. He could still hear her even now. It was peaceful in the cellar. It was free here in the cellar. Fuck. Let's see. I think there's another ending as well. Uh, like, I think if I just... Oh, okay. That literally just exits the game. Okay. Well, that was... That was actually a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. And, like, I haven't seen a playthrough of this before either. And, like, I beat it in, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. I liked how it relied a lot on the ambience and the story instead of like, bleh, jump scares. <laughs> and like, this is so, like this and the Moon Sliver are, I think are very similar. Uh, I think where his games start getting different and like weird was like the music machine. So yeah, I'm excited to talk to him about it. So yeah, let's go to that right now.
And I'm joined today by David Szymanski. He is the creator of Dusk, Finger Bones, A Wolf in Autumn, Music Machine. I am I missing any more? <laughs> uh, the Moon Sliver. The Moon Sliver, that and is right. The Grandfather, but we don't talk about that one. No. Oh. <laughs> cool. Uh, so what was your first game that you made, and how did you get into making games? Um, the first game I ever made was this little uh, ASCII, so it was all like um, text characters game called Spy. And it's actually still around. Like some Dusk fans have, uh, some guy put it up on um, archive.org with like DOS, DOS box and stuff. So you can still play it, which is really cool. Um, but that was back when I was like, I don't know, 13 or 14 or 12, somewhere around that age, um, where I had gotten into doing, um, I'd gotten into QBasic, which is a really old programming language. And that was because. Um, I was a big fan of Myst when I was younger. I still am, actually. But um, I one day just suddenly realized, wait, I could make something like Myst. And so I kind of started on that path toward, you know, learning how to program and making games. Um, still haven't made anything like Myst, actually. <laughs> Maybe that's next on the list now that I've uh, checked retro FPS off. Um. But yeah, that was the first game that I ever like made and finished and distributed um, online. And like, I don't know, like three people probably played it or something. It had... Oh, <laughs> I think his internet went out. Hold on. What were your influences growing up that led you into making the games that you currently do? Um, well, Myst was one. Like, I've always loved that. The, the just the atmosphere of the game, you know, it's really lonely and um, windswept and all that. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of stuff that then went into like the moon sliver, uh, a lot of those feelings. Um, that was kind of the main one growing up when I was a kid, um, because I wasn't really allowed to play violent games until I was older. Uh, <laughs> so once I got older and started playing those violent games, then, you know, um stuff like doom and duke nukem 3d and half-life and chasm which is a game no one's ever heard of um all ended up in the mix uh as well and um the reason like i'm actually not technically the uh the right age to have been like playing doom and all that stuff uh when it came out um but we had um very bad computers None of our computers were good. And so basically all I could play uh, in the early 2000s was like old shareware. Um, so that's what I played. I'd like grab, you know, Duke Nukem 3D shareware and play that and until got to the end of the, the shareware episode and then replay it and stuff. Um, and then once I got uh, even older, went off to college, uh, then I started actually playing uh, relatively new games. Like uh, that's when I played stalker and fell in love with that and that's had a just huge influence on um how i think about like atmosphere and stuff like that um played you know horror games and yeah you know, i hadn't i'd played scary games when i was a teenager but i i guess uh i never really played like resident evil or anything like that um so i guess i it wasn't really until college where i really got into like horror games as as such rather than just uh you know shooter that happens to be scary or immersive sim that happens to be scary like system shock 2 um and so then uh going into like st starting to create the i guess you'd call them walking sim horror games uh that i was doing you know before dusk um mainly it was like uh scratches by um Senscape. I was trying to remember the developer name, Senscape. Uh, they made a game called Scratches, and uh, it was it was sort of a, I mean, it's just a point-and-click adventure. You know, it's uh, on the outside, it's nothing special, but what really struck me about it is how much it was able to do with very little. Um, and so I came away from playing that and being like, wow, you can make a horror game that doesn't, like, have monsters that you're fighting in it, or you monsters that you're running. You could just have, like, a creepy story and if you tell it right it's scary that was sort of the you know idea i got coming out of that and i wanted to do something like that 
Um, and that's what led into doing finger bones and you know then everything after that cool i can i actually haven't played finger bones yet i think they i'm gonna play finger bones and then have this interview at like the end of it kind of thing yeah <laughs> mm, the, i'm i will warn you going in it's um very flawed oh that's fine <laughs> like i'm i think even at the time there were some issues and especially now i'm not sure how effective that's gonna be looking back but so Finger Bones was your first, I would say, major release that you did. Uh, what followed that? And what was the reception like to your earlier works? Um, so I released Finger Bones. Uh, I don't even remember if it was like afternoon or evening or whatever. I just I released it on Game Jolt. Um, I'd released games before that. Like, um, actually, I won't say quite a few, but I'd released, you know, games online before that. And what happens is you release it maybe like 12 people play it and then no one else ever plays it again. That's just how it goes. You know, that's, that was, that was being a typical indie developer back in, you know, before the days of green light, flinging the gates open and letting everyone on, um, onto steam. So I, you know, released it. I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and had like a whole ton of notifications on game jolt. Because I went to Game Jolt to just see, you know, hey, maybe a couple people have played this and reviewed it. Um, there are a crap ton of notifications. <laughs> um, and it turned out that they, uh, Game Jolt uh, had liked it and had featured it. And I forget what it was. I think it was just called being featured. Uh, at that point, they did like one game was featured on the front page for, I think, maybe a week at a time. And they'd chosen Fingerbones to be that game. And so a whole bunch of people had played it, and it had really good reviews, too. Um, I later on learned that basically any game that gets released on Game Jolt has really good reviews. <laughs> so it wasn't that special. But at the time, it was like, holy crap! You know, it was a, um, it was a huge deal for me, because I'd never really had anyone playing my games, uh, you know, that number of people playing my games before. Um, and so then I started sending it out to Let's Players. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, let's just see if, if, you know, people like it. Let's see if a lot of people like it. Um, and the reception was really good for the most part. A couple people hated it. Um, I think the reception was probably better than the game actually deserved, uh, in my opinion now. But, you know, it was good enough that I then dove into making my next one not just being like oh let's make another game and do the same thing but being like maybe i can make a game now and release it for money and like actually earn money off of this <laughs> so wait what uh so chronologically what comes next the moon sliver or was it yeah moon sliver is next okay then it was music machine yeah so after the positive reception of finger bones next up comes the moon sliver and my personal favorite the music machine how did you Hold on. <laughs> I jumbled my words in my head. So after the positive reception of Finger Bones, you went into your next few projects with uh, the Moon Sliver and my personal favorite, the Music Machine, uh, with a different attitude. Do you think that influenced your design choices or your sort of approach to making these games? Yeah, definitely. Because what I'd done before Finger Bones was a whole bunch of very gameplay focused things. They were 2D, you know, they were like top down or um side scrolling things um but they were they weren't very like narrative driven or they weren't even really horror-y uh so finger bones was like this huge hugely different thing than anything i'd done before and then when it seemed to do you know much much better than anything i'd done before i was like well okay i guess this is what i'm making now <laughs> um you know i was still really interested in the idea also of trying to do that whole horror with uh more focus on like the atmosphere and the narrative and all that stuff than uh jump scares etc um but you know having finger bones be this enormous success definitely uh definitely met uh made it so that i was gonna be making that sort of game for a while afterward <laughs> Uh, let's see. Then you did Wolf and Autumn, uh, and Grandfather, 
and then after that is dusk. Yeah. Cool. Uh, excellent. And then I think I know what I'm asking next. Cool. And so now with the release of these games, you have a bit of a library uh, of really substantial, like quality horror games, in my opinion. And now you're going to move towards uh, Dusk, which is more of a retro kind of twitchy shooter. What was it like shifting gears that much? And uh, you also enlisted uh, help from uh, different people uh, to like help them make the music and like, like how was it building a team to make Dusk? Yeah, so it was a huge switch. Um, what happened is uh, Moonsliver did quite well. Well, I released Moonsliver on Itch first, and it did, you know, not that good. I mean, it's Itch games. If you just release something off onto Itch, it's not going to sell thousands of copies. You know, you have to, if you want something to sell on Itch, you have to really push. And, you know, I didn't know that, but I released it on Itch, and it did a little bit. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. I'll throw it on green light, threw it up on green light. Um, and it sat on there for a while and eventually went through, um, it went onto steam and I was just very lucky in how the release went and, um, just with a lot of things that it ended up doing quite well on steam, I would say for how small the game was and, you know, for all of those factors. Um, did well enough that I was like, okay, I can make this something like, you know, something resembling a job. Um, and so then I went into doing the music machine with even more energy, making it even, you know, bigger, lots more, you know, more impressive, all this stuff. Um, and then that released and didn't do quite as well for a variety of different reasons. I think music machine was a lot more of a fair release in a way where it's like, that's, a little more representative of how those sort of games were selling on Steam um, around, uh, what was that, 2015, I think, at that point. Um, so then I went into doing A Wolf in Autumn it w with not so much excitement as, like, panic. Um, and uh, at the same time, I think I had gotten into not a great place mentally with regards to, like, how I was thinking about development and thinking about horror fans and all this stuff where I just gotten had gotten into a really negative place where I was feeling really frustrated with how I felt um how I felt things were going and also you know panicked with being like oh crap this didn't actually make that much money and now this is my job how am I gonna keep you know supporting my wife um and so I very quickly worked on a Wolf and Autumn, uh, started it out as something that was supposed to be sort of a, um, a safe bet, I guess I would say. I was, you know, going, trying to have a little more overt horror in there with, you know, actual, well, not really threats, but, you know, actual things that you would be scared of. Um, and somehow <laughs> going in with that, um, with that goal, I and the game actually ended up being like really uh what's the word not that it was not a safe bet it was it was a game with a lot of things that I think probably turned people off and a lot of things that were not well done actually looking back on it I was sort of rushing through I was at a point where I wasn't really thinking about okay what are people actually going to appreciate I was just getting angry and being like screw them this is what I want to do. Um, and just for a lot of reasons, I think that game ended up being not nearly as good as it could have been. And uh, it came out and also did not, you know, sell very well, sold worse than Music Machine. And so at that point, I decided it was time for a break. Uh, I can't remember if I'd finished The Grandfather at that point, um, which I was... I wasn't really designing the grandfather. I was just sort of developing it. Um, so that was sort of a bit of a side project. Um, but that at some point during this whole thing, that also came out and did not sell very well either. And so I decided it was time to take a step back and be like, okay, let's, let's 
relax for a bit and maybe decide what sort of games I want to make. And long story short, that ended up being Dusk. You know, I was just, I spent some time messing around with things, different prototypes, and one of those prototypes turned into Dusk. And it was originally going to be a bigger release than, you know, Wolf and Autumn or uh, The Music Machine. Uh, but it wasn't going to be as big a release as it turned out being because it was just me working on it. You know, I I wanted to limit the scope and just sort of make something in a year's time, uh, make this retro FPS I'd always wanted to make since I'd always been interested in retro FPS. Um, and then I got involved with New Blood just sort of by happenstance where I sent a build to Dave and he was like, this is amazing. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess we're working together now. Um, and then bringing on, like, Andrew was, so, like, you know, I am a composer. <clears throat> I mean, I've done, except for Dusk, I've done all the, own music, all the music for my own games. And so I was planning on doing that with Dusk also. And Dave was like, yeah, well, we have Andrew Holschult. He's wanted to do a Quake-like game. I'm like, yeah, but I'm a composer. That's literally what I spent thousands of dollars to get a degree in. Um, but then Andrew did some music and I'm like, well, this is pretty good. Um, and I guess that would let me spend more time on levels and all this stuff. So we brought him on, um, and then development continued and we got to a point where we're like, you know, we kind of need, a, um, we need some people to help out with like quality assurance and stuff. So we brought some people who were like fans of the game, um, in its pre-release form brought them on for QA and then it got to a point where it's like, well, I, I have no idea what I'm doing with networking. This is not getting anywhere. So we ended up, um, get, you know, bringing on someone who I'd been talking about, about networking, who was also a Dusk fan to work on multiplayer. And so it was just this very gradual process of it turning from just another game where I'd been working on that, that I would have worked on myself to being a game with a lot of people involved in different ways. And that was a, an adjustment in a way, um, and so most mostly a good adjustment, actually, I would say. Um, it ended up being really nice to have not just people around that were helping to fill in gaps, um, but also having other eyes on the product and, other, you know, other people to say, like, hey, this doesn't work for me and explain why, and me to have to listen to that because they're people i'm working with they're not just random you know they're not just random people i'm sending the game to that i can say like eh, their opinion doesn't matter it's like you have to listen to them and that that ended up being really good uh there's so much about dusk where i was able to see what i i would have done and what ended up happening after you know going back and forth with dave about design or going back and forth with other people and in almost every single case uh what happened after that you know, back and forth with other people was even better. And comparing that and how well that turned out um, with, you know, what happened with A Wolf and Autumn, where I was just ignoring any pre-release feedback that I got from anyone and just being like, no, you know. Uh, it was very obvious that working with other people in that way had, you know, was a lot better, at least for Dusk. And so going forward, I really like working on my own i really like being a independent develop you know a solo independent developer um but i think i'm going to continue bringing in other people not just to help out on specific things but to look at what i have and tell me whether it's you know whether it makes sense to anyone else or whether it's just me being crazy so a very long answer i know but uh yeah that i think i think i i Ended up answering the question. That was perfect. <laughs> what was the response to Dusk like? Was it anything that you had imagined? Was it far beyond your expectations? How how did that go? How was it received? Um, insanely well. Like I still kind of can't believe how overwhelmingly positive the response to it has been. Uh, because I have a lot of indie friends. You know, you just you you make friends with the other people who are in your same field. Um, and a lot of them have a very uh, strained relationship with their audience where 
you know, they'll they'll get like they'll get hate comments and you know, people being negative and stuff and it's just somehow we've been lucky enough not to have that um where all of our fans are just awesome for the most part you know every once in a while we'll get like one person who's just a jerk um but it's the exception rather than the rule um and even if you go into places like uh reddit or like 4chan it's like we've seen a bunch of positive stuff about dusk and it's just weird it's just, to me it's just very strange um because that's the sort of thing you imagine as a developer you imagine this case where like you know you release this game and everyone just loves it and it's the best thing um but you know that usually doesn't happen usually it releases and um you know some people like it some people don't like it um but with dusk it's just been like everyone seems to like it and, you know, I can't take full credit for that because, you know, I had New Blood uh, and everyone, like, you know, supporting that and helping to form it into what it is. Um, and, but yeah, it's it's been crazy and awesome. And I'm very thankful for all the fans we have and everyone that helped make the game what it is. So I follow you on Twitter and I see you teasing these screenshots with a very unique sort of color palette or uh, artistic approach. I want to ask, what is next? What's, what's, what's cooking? Yeah, um, so Dusk took a long time. Um, <laughs> Dusk was originally, gonna, like I said, going to be a one-year-long project. That turned into about three years. Um, and for the most part, that was a very good thing. It made the game a much better, uh, much more robust, you know, game. Um, but also by the end of working on dusk i was again super burnt out um like dave and the new blood guys had to like push and drag me over the finish line basically um because it was it, it was an intense three years a lot of things changed and there were a lot of there was a lot of you know obviously a lot of work um and so after finishing dusk while I suppose now I could jump into another big game and I have plenty of ideas for like big games I'd want to do. I just don't really have the energy yet. <laughs> like the concept, the, like the idea of jumping into another like three year long dev cycle is just exhausting. Um, and I also, you know, I've had enough time away from horror that I've kind of realized all of the, the this terrible the bad way that i was approaching my interaction with like my audience and with horror or the you know the indie horror scene in general and i kind of missed it actually i've kind of missed indie horror working in that working with alongside other solo developers making these small little games um so i was like well let's do that again it's you know it's fallen way out of not not necessarily out of favor, but it's like definitely not the hotness on Steam anymore. Whereas like back in 2015, you know, everyone was making horror games. And at the time I like bemoaned that. I'm like, oh, there's all these crappy horror games and it's like impossible to stand out and stuff. But now I kind of miss it because, you know, now there's just not a lot of those small indie horror. There are some, but not nearly as many as there were. Um, so I want to do that again. I want to do another short, small little horror game, taking all the stuff that I learned in the three years since releasing Wolf and Autumn, and you know, just do that again. So that uh, thing that I'm working on with the limited color palette looks a little bit like the Music Machine, but with a lot more pixelization. Um, that's still in the really early stages, but I have a whole story planned out. Uh, I have a bunch of ideas that I'm pretty excited about, and um, hopefully it won't take too long to develop. Uh, and we'll just see how it does. It, you know, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be a giant hit. Luckily, I, I'm very lucky in that way, so I can just kind of make something uh, niche and weird again. Awesome. Uh, so the next few questions are going to be like just rapid, kind of like boom, boom. What game are you playing? Uh, Pathologic 2. What's on your radar? Like, what's coming up? 
Whatever, whatever uh, Vetus is working on. That weird thing with buckets or whatever's going on there. Uh, the Timor guy. I'm interested in that. I want to play that. It's actually good you brought that up because he's my next interview. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to that. I want to hear from him. What was the last movie you saw? Um, no, it wasn't John Wick. It was uh, King of Monsters, Godzilla. How was your trip? Oh my gosh, it was uh, crazy but fun. Who's a developer you want to see more from other than the Timor guy? Mm. Oh, um, Dorigo Games. And finally, do you have any advice for upcoming developers? Um, all the, all the typical advice applies. Also, assume things will take longer than you think, because they always do. That is perfect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to answer these silly questions. Yeah, no problem. I hope it was somewhat comprehensible. Uh, compre compre it's, yeah, that's the right word. I tend to, like, blabber on, and sometimes the point gets lost, so hopefully it'll, it'll be okay after it's edited. No, I think I think it was great. Uh, where can people find you? Um, that would be at DuskDev on Twitter. And that's pretty much it. I basically just use Twitter. You can also check out um noob what is shoot, what is that site? What is their site? <laughs> Hold on, let me make sure I have it right. Uh uh yeah. Uh, newblood.games. You can check out newblood.games if you want to see other things that are like Dusk um, and possibly upcoming things that I may or may not be working on with other people there. Ooh. Um, Ooh. And I have a Steam page, or a Steam, whatever you call it, creator page, which is, let me find it. Make sure I have that name right also. Oh, okay. Well, it's just David Szymanski on Steam. If you search that, hopefully you'll find it. <laughs> yeah, I'll put links in the description okay. and everything. Everybody, please go check out his work. He makes great stuff. Let's support the indie devs, please. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on, and I'll see you guys next time.